All right. Well, good morning slash afternoon, depending on what time zone you are at. And uh, yeah, today's topic is uh, about hustle. So let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. So give me a quick second. Oh, may I have share permissions, please, Yoda? Yeah, I can figure that out. Let's see here. And if somebody else can figure it out quicker than me, there we go. All right, make co-host. All right. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. One second. Um, you should be. You should be co-host now. Okay, cool. So today's topic is the truth about hustle. And, you know, we live in a culture of rise and grind, celebrate it. We think it's awesome. But before I start uh, talking about you guys, I'll just share a little bit about like what my hustle looks like. So I'm sure in the world of real estate and us being entrepreneurs, we're like, hustle is good. Like hustle is what we want. Um, I loved hustle. Like hustle was like, I don't know, dare I say almost a drug for me because without hustle, where would I be? I mean, like I live to get up to go and just like, just charge the day, take over, want to dominate the market, the world, whatever it is that I'm doing. And I would do everything around hustling. Not that I did it consciously, not that I woke up and said, oh, I want to hustle today. But that, that energy, that spirit of just like going, grinding and hustling looked like this. Okay. Um, when I'm walking up the stairs, I couldn't just walk up the stairs. I had to run up the stairs. Why? Because I heard one day that, oh, this guy, he was such a hustler. Like he was, he was always so high energy. So go, go, go that he didn't just run up the stairs. I mean, he didn't just walk, he ran. So in my mind that planted a seed of like, you know what? That's a really good idea. Why walk? I mean, when you can run. So I would run up the stairs, I would run down the stairs. When I just want to get a drink of water, I would be drinking the water with one hand and then doing something else with the other hand, like multitasking. Part of the hustle package is multitasking. Oh yeah, how well can we multitask? When we see people, meet people, hire people. Oh my gosh, when I'm hiring people, I would look for the hustle. Truth be told, I would look for a little bit or a lot of a workaholicism, right? If people, I wanted to have workaholics, so they would just like work their butts off and I wouldn't have to like drag them up a hill to work. And so um, like hustle was a prize. It was a badge of honor. It was a trophy. It was a good thing. Like if you didn't have hustle in my mind, it's like, oh, not as cool, not as productive. You're not going to be as successor, uh, successful. It was a, it was a mark of someone who had successful traits, right? And so it was like hailed as like this thing that's awesome and that's good. And like, I couldn't even listen to an audio book at one or two X speed. Like if there was a three X speed, I'd be listening to audiobooks at three X speed. It was insane. My brain was constantly on the go and I had to be consuming something, doing something, sitting still, forget it. Right? Like the, that's for losers, right? Like still peace that's for losers. So, um, I don't know if you can relate to that at all, but I mean, that's how I thought, I mean, like hustle was it. And so. That's kind of how it looked like and showed up in my life. But, and I did that for many, 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 many years. And, um, you know, eventually it came to the point where, uh, that was my mindset, my culture. And eventually, let me tell you what, it just flat out, like ended up in burnout, like nothing else. Literally, it was just like run myself into the ground. And I thought, I don't know, I guess I thought I was a super human being powers. I thought I could go on forever. I thought my battery was like endless because compared to everybody else around me, it kind of felt that way. I mean, you know, cause you would hear things like, oh, wow, she's a go-getter. Oh, wow. She gets things done. Oh, wow. Nothing's going to stop her. You know, you hear things like that. And it's like this attaboy pat on the back and it kind of feeds you. Right. And so, um, for me, it made it worse. And then I crashed and burned at one point. So that was how hustle showed up in my life. So I just want to go into that conversation with you guys and unpack this and see, maybe perhaps I can prevent some burnout. I can prevent some breaking the, the, the carcasses that are left in the wake of hustle. Um, perhaps I can prevent some of those for you today. So, um, as we continue, what is hustle, right? Um, Lars talk to me here to you. What is hustle? Like, 
what what does it mean to you and how do you define it? Yeah, so to me, I would say hustle's almost like an it's an unnatural response to what's going on in, in your life and business. So my, my wife jokes with me, there's a there's a video. I don't know what platform it's on, but it's this guy that does everything super fast. Like if he's cleaning the house or if he's like, you know, getting something from the refrigerator, he's just like always in like double, triple speed. And so, so to me, the, the hustle in terms of this conversation, um, it would show up like, you know, being nervous about my finances, you know, when there's no reason to be, or, um, you know, my, my response to a problem in the business is for me to jump in and, you know, work overdrive on it. So it's just like a bunch of unthoughtful, unnatural, uncalled for responses. And, and it doesn't sort of let, let, let go. It's not like I'm going zero to 60. I'm, I'm like 60 to a hundred, you know, so I'm, I'm never coming down into like, uh, you know, uh, if you've seen the movie old school where, um, Vince Vaughn, they, it's the morning after where they're at the estate and he's like, I'm just going to, I'm going to put this thing in neutral. I'm going to cool the jets. Like it's not being able to put it in neutral. Yep. And I mean, if, if I may give you another visual, it's like you're a rat on acid, right? Like you're just freaking going crazy. So I just pulled up, I'm like, Hey, what does like Webster dictionary have to say about this or just online Google? So it's busy movement and activity. Okay. That sounds pretty decent. Then it's like to make strenuous efforts to obtain, especially money or business. It's like, okay, well now you're talking. Um, and then there's to make someone move quickly by pushing or pulling them along. So when I looked at that, I'm like, huh, when we, when we're like in hustle mode or hustle lifestyle, right? It's almost as if something we can't quite our, put our fingers on and maybe it's our own head. So we tell ourselves, um, is like compelling us to go quickly and pushing us. So, you know, I'm just gonna throw this out there before we, you know, talk about it further. It's like, hey, are we getting hustle into hustling by our own head or some, you know, like kind of life variables? So just kind of sit on that for a little bit. And um, let's take a look at how do we value hustle, right? Um, and so I just pulled up quotes about hustle and this is kind of like what's out there. Every day is a hustle. Good things happen to those who hustle. Success is 10%, uh, and, uh, success is 10% talent and 90% hustle. Let your hustle be louder than your words, right? Without hustle, talent will only carry you so far. So hustle, like, is this, a, uh, like this necessity and essential it's a uh, required ingredient to being successful. So we already think that hustle is good. Like we should have more of it. You don't have any at all here, have a basketful of hustle because you're missing out. So that's the mindset that we currently have about hustle. And I'm here to say, like, that's not the truth. That's society's um, version of hustle. That's society's values. So I want to bust some myths today and go into what is the price of hustle, okay? So you could put shiny little sparkly things on anything that you want. But when you look at its fruit, right, when you start looking at what price did you have to pay, let's take a closer look at the real price of hustle. So the first is spouse relationships, right? And yes, I put it there neglect and abuse because um, what ends up happening first is that, you know, your loved ones, your, your spouse, your children, your family, um, they get neglected in your hustle, right? And when you go into um, a deeper like study about neglect and emotional verbal abuse, like neglect is actually abuse. I know it sounds harsh, but let's put it this way. If you saw a dog uh, in someone's yard and they were never getting fed and their bones were starting to show through and you can see every single one of their rib cages, would it be likely that some neighbor would uh, uh, report that person for neglect and abuse of an animal? If there was a child that was sitting out on the front doorstep, rain or shine, rainy or, or snowy, and nobody was feeding it, and this baby has been crying for days, like wouldn't that parent if they were sitting inside watching TV, get like reported and lose their parental rights for neglect and abuse, right? So those are extreme examples. But what I'm saying here is that in your hustle, the price that you're uh, paying 
is that your spouse, your kids, your friendships, your relationships, they get neglected and therefore abused. And I know nobody comes out here saying, oh, I'm going to abuse my family and my loved ones. But what if that's the truth about the price that you're paying of, uh, for hustle? And then there's physical health, like, oh yeah, sleeplessness, uh, mental health, can't think, can't, um, can't think, can't drink. You're always waking up in the middle of the night or you can't go to sleep because you're like, oh, I'm missing something. Oh, I forgot to do that. Like you can't turn it off. Right. And, um, what is it? You pay the price of hustle in your business operation. So like, oh my gosh, my poor team, um, before my hustle kind of got into check, I would drive my team. Like the hustle was so like intense. I didn't even have to tell somebody to hustle and they would just feel the hustle oozing out of me and they would feel the pressure. They would feel the stress. They would just like kick it into high gear and it would not be good for them, right? Um, internal relationships on the team, like the way I interacted with my team members, whether it's my admin or my other agents, I'm like, it was like, let's get to it. You know, when they come to talk to me with something, it'd be like, okay, what's your point? Like get to the bottom line, right? Let's not have too much fluff around here and sleep. Let's not talk about emotions or feelings. Can we spare this conversation, emotions and feelings that have no factual basis, right? Like that was me. Um, and like I said, eventually after all that hustle, it led to burnout, like, right. And I didn't even know I was crashing and burning. No, it's just kind of like the ebbs and flows, but it's like a, a stock market going down. Like it's, you're like, Hey, I've got plenty of energy and it like gradually dwindle. Right. And so you start just don't even know. It's like a frog being boiled in water one degree at a time until finally you're like getting seared and burned. So I'm here to tell you that the hustle lifestyle is a ticking time bomb. And Mia, so look, go, go back to that slide here. Get in the chat if you're willing. Where where do you see in, in your life and your business, where do you see the, the price of hustle right now? I know for me, for sure, you know, in, in different seasons with, with my family, in terms of, you know, my, my stated priorities would be, you know, God, family and business and my actual priorities, according to where I spent my time was business, you know, you know, family and God sort of like the splitting 10% of my focus. Yep. And it's like, and I think that's a really great indicator. It's like, you can say what it is that you want your values to be, but time use time as your measuring stick and that'll be the true indicator of what your values are right yeah and a lot of physical health um interrelationships exhaustion that's another thing too when i was in the heavy build hashtag rise and grind years of real estate my physical health was the thing that if i could go back in time i would not have uh i would not have sacrificed that Brandy's definitely felt burnout, friendships, food choices, nutrition, exercise, sleep and family, being present, kids, relationships. Uh, Madeline's hit the burn out just now coming back mm -hmm. and it hit, it hit, hit all of these areas. Uh, Catherine's currently working on connecting with her social sisterhood, physical, mental, mental, no focus. Yeah, that's the crazy thing too. It's like you get to the point where you're actually not able to focus on the things that really matter. Um, stress and anxiety, mental health and God relationships. Cullen doesn't hustle. Good for you, Cullen. <laughs> um, personal time, not present. Yeah, really good guys. And this is the stuff, you know, honestly, this is the stuff that nobody really talks about, especially in real estate, you know? Um, so I appreciate you guys really hanging in and leaning into this conversation. This is the stuff that only gets talked about when it's, when it's after the fact, when there is a breakdown, when there is, you know, a divorce or when there is a physical illness or when there is, you know, so we just don't, we don't want that to happen. So really good. All right. Awesome. Awesome. 
Um, and so glad that you guys are just kind of taking a look into yourselves and, um, you know, just checking it out. Um, so let's get real now, a little bit more real talk is like, why do we hustle, right? Because the label that we love to put on it, the label I love to put on it is because it's fun. I like success. I like building. I like growth, you know, like all the healthy labels that we put on it that look like something that we can wear as a, a, a badge of honor, um, you know, a good trophy. And there's a lot of that. But if we were to really take a deeper look, anybody who is out of balance, there's something that was out of balance that's making them more out of balance in their hustle, right? Like, I don't have anything against good work ethic, right? And working hard, like, I'm still that. But when there is a weird kind of like a, a perverted twist to productivity and it comes out in the form of unbalanced hustle, let's take a look at some of the common reasons that's really, really driving it, okay? And so one is obviously there's the top layer, there's like ego, right? Um, like I want to look at, I want to be number one. Um, I mean, I know like in our group, Barb, I don't know how you felt, but man, we had, we were in a room of like overachievers and like rate, right? and it's a great group, group, so I'm not knocking the group, but I mean, like that type of energy, like it spans you further, right? You and feel like a, a loser, like, man, that guy's selling like 600 homes. Like that's what I need to do. It's like, I'm a loser. I'm only doing 300. I know. No, I'm I'm half the person. <laughs> I know. You're only doing three. It's like, oh my gosh, like, oh. Um, and so uh, there's ego. And then um you go a little bit deeper and it's like what I've experienced, even for myself and a lot of others, is that there's a lot of people that grew up without money that are in real estate and they're like, oh my gosh, like this is my chance. You know, I grew up poor. I didn't even know what money was like. I, you know, our family couldn't put food on the table or I never really got to buy what I want. And so like this whole taste of providing and success, um, it, it stems from childhood experiences and your relationship with money and like that there's not enough. So I have to like get it while it's hot. Right. And then it actually morphs into once that person starts having children and family, then it's like, especially as a man, it's like, oh, I'm providing for my family. Right. Like you can't knock that. I'm providing for my family. Like I'm making sure that my kids can go to college so they can all have cars so they can go all to the best schools and they can do all the sports and clothes. I'm providing for my family. So like and that's hard to knock, right? But when the price you pay for providing for your family is relationships, you know you're not giving them what they need because what they're telling you they need and want is your time. And that's not there. That key indicator is off else somewhere in land of work mode, of grind mode. So um, those are some underlying, um, uh, you know, just more core motivators. Um, some people like without even knowing, I'm seeing a lot of these things happen without you even like say, it's not wake up in the morning and say, hey, since I grew up for the first 20 years of my life, not having money, I need to overcompensate today and tomorrow and every other day. Um, it happens just automatically. Um, you know, sometimes there is a sense of purpose that you're seeking and you feel like you can do a lot more with money um, than without. And so therefore you're going to use your money for good deed. And so you're hustling and grinding because that's what I did. I was like, yeah, when I make a uh, bajillion, kajillion dollars, I can help the world. And therefore that's a good cause of it has purpose and meaning. I get that. But when you look at the price that you're paying and the dead bodies in your way, um, then you know that it's not a a fruit of a healthy, balanced life of, of achieving. It's an out of control, out of balance, warped version of what we were supposed to do. So, um, and you can wrap overcompensation into that. And sometimes we just work like crap so we don't have to deal with other issues. And we we don't necessarily know that we're avoiding. It's just more comfortable work, right? It's less comfortable. Having those conversations, whether it's with your family, your spouse, your brother, sister, whatever other emotional kind of baggage is out there, going into work where you have way more control over things and it's, you can cut things off and like fire people, hire people, whatever it is. Um, it's a lot easier actually, you know, 
I always admired stay at home moms because I would much rather work eight to 10 hours than stay home with screaming children with no off button. Uh, so those are things like family, um, uh, family responsibilities are things that are just harder and you can't um, turn off when you want to. So anyways, I think the check here is how much of your hustle, right? Is healthy, balanced, and driven by a joy, like motivation, not a no motivation, not a you know fear motivation. So check the motivation of your hustle, and that will be a key indicator um, to that. And sometimes you can kind of kid yourself, but at least this isn't a start. So, um, what is it, uh, Lars? What are some of the things that showed up for you in the reason why you hustled um, more before? Yeah, mine was definitely, you know, and, I, and I've done some of this, this work. It's just an unnatural drive based on childhood stuff. You know, parents divorced it for uh, alcoholic dad, a um, lot of poverty and, you know, scarcity. Um, and, and just from an early age going toward achievement, you know, so I did great in school. I've always just really focused and worked hard on the thing at, at, at hand, but in business, there's no end. Like if in my corporate job, I could crush it, you know, but I wasn't like working at night, you know, cause I sort of left it at the office, but in business, it could just, you know, it could do everything. It, it could sort of engulf all, all of your extra time. Um, but then also like you, you mentioned not, not necessarily avoiding a bigger issue, but in business, I can like make moves and do things that like result in an outcome, like sometimes immediate where if like, I'm trying to get my kids to do something or, you know, my spouse and our, both of our baggage and try to like, get those to fit together infinitely harder, you know, it's, it's the more important, you know, work, but so much harder than just focusing on business and rationalizing my first why was to create a lifestyle for my family that they never thought was possible. You know, I said that, that to good, myself. Man. Yeah, that totally good. good. Um, but really not, not the true reason. It's to fill a void in me. If, if I woke up every day, it's like to fill a void. I'm going to crush it today to fill a void in me that is not fillable, you know, when, <laughs> with money and success uh, that would not have motivated me the way that it did. Um, so, yeah. Um, and oh, I want to share uh, like how it started for me is when I was younger, um, I, I moved around a lot, so I never really, uh, or I, there was a time where I didn't have like friends um, and there was a lot of times where I was just awkward. Okay. Um, and so I remember 16, something clicked in my head when I like tasted productivity and I was like, oh my gosh, it felt so good to do all of this and get all these things done. It like literally was like a little mini high, right? You're like, oh my gosh, this feels amazing. And, um, and then in my head, I was like, why can't I do this every day? I like remember that moment so distinctly clear that, um, from that day on, I was like, let's try and be productive. That, that feeling was so amazing. I want to be productive like every day. And so, um, looking back, right, the wiser, more reflective me would have said, uh, realized that that was filling a certain void. What I mean by that is there weren't other things that were um, rewarding enough, um, whether it's my own um, value or significance and feeling that productivity was like a little bit of a hit of something good, you know? Um, and so I kept on going and I kept on doing and I kept on achieving. And luckily it, you know, kept me out of trouble, but, um, that did lead me into a life of like striving, achieving and hustling. So, um, again, it's hard to, uh, I mean, I didn't even recognize it till like decades later. Um, so anyways, all right. So what is the truth about hustle? Um, hustle in many cases can be a disguise. And now I'm not talking about working hard, but the hustle that's out of balance, the hustle where you're paying all these prices, um, that we mentioned before that you didn't mean to pay, right? You're like, oh, that's overdrawing my bank account, you know, emotionally, relationally. And it's, that's not the results that I was looking for. So when you're in that type of hustle, just know that hustle is a disguise and a common disguise for hustle um, is under a true identity, okay? Um, of that hustle is a fear disguised as productivity, right? 
even when you're being driven by, I want to, you know, provide for my family. It's a, there's a fear a lot of times of like, oh my God, there's a fear of not enough money. I won't have enough money to provide for them. Ah, uh, I won't have enough money, whether it, it can start as cleaning the fridge to cars in the garage, to clothes in the closets, to, um, you know, schools and all that stuff. But it is a fear driven, like I need to provide for my family because I didn't have it growing up or I just don't want it to run out, whatever that is. Um, it could be a fear of um, not looking good. It could be a fear of not being, you know, significant, um, you know, worth a certain value in your own head and other people's head. But it's a lot of it, a tremendous amount of hustle is fear driven. So there are many lies that disguise the identity of fear. So meaning like, okay, if, if that's true, then how come we're, we're not recognized? How come we're kind of falling into its trap so easily? So many of us, like almost most, if not almost all of us, except that one person in here that didn't have hustle. <laughs> um, but why is it so common if it's that bad and that kind of obvious once you unpack it? And so I just want to give a uh, layout some lies versus truth about hustle, right? So the thing that we tell ourselves a lot is that there's not enough time, okay? And I want to say that the truth around that is there's not enough time is a scarcity, right? It's a fear of not enough time. So it is driven by fear. And the truth in that, and now I'm going to weave a little bit of God here because he is truth that will anchor us, right? God is abundant in time, right? He doesn't run out of time. So if you have faith and you have faith in him, then you don't have to worry about not enough time. You just have to worry about being in sync with him. The other, another lie is I have to do it now. Why? Because if I don't do this now, I'll miss the opportunity. So I'm kind of blending, you know, number two and three here, but that too is the fear. Like you're going to lose out with the fear of losing out on an opportunity is still a fear as if there's not enough time, as if there's not enough opportunity. All that is a fear scarcity driven mentality in response. Okay. And so the truth in that is that, Hey, God has perfect timing. He's never too late or too early. Even if it's at the 11th hour, there's plenty of time when you are perfect, right? So you have to get into faith about, Hey, there's enough time and there's a, there's a God that loves me and it's even bigger than what I perceive as deadlines and leaning into that. Because the thing is, is that he doesn't want you hustling. God wants your heart more than your hustle. Um, he's not like, oh my gosh, yeah, you did so good for me because you hustled. Nowhere does it say that he wants our hustle. He wants our heart. Our heart is where our treasures are. Our treasure is our time. That's the thing that we want to give away the least. Like for those who neglect our family, again, been there, done that. We want to give away our time the least to our, our family, our close ones. We would rather stroke a check. Let's put it that way. We would rather stroke a check than put in our time. That's how valuable our time is and how not willing we are to give it away. So our treasure is our time. And a lot of times we're putting that into business instead of relationships and family. Um, and then there's that whole, you have to get this done ASAP, right? That again, goes back into a scarcity of time. There's not enough time. The window is closing. If you don't get it now, it's uh, the opportunity is over. Too bad, so sad. Opportunity is limited. You you should have gotten it right. Those are all fears and lies about time. And then uh, getting things done is the key to success, right? Hustle is where it's at. If, you know, yeah, you can have ta talent, but if you don't have hustle, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. Again, it's that that compelling right? Unhealthy urge to get things done because if you don't get it done, you're going to miss out. And um, when it's tied to like your self-worth or your value or like how awesome you are and your awesome sauce, um, then it's, you know, the more I get done, the better I am. So um, the truth in that is that no, not your plan. It's God's plan. Like our plan is go, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. But God's like, yo, uh, yeah, that's like a recipe for burnout in long term. It's like the tortoise and the hare, you know, is it, um, uh, the tortoise nice and the easy uh, wins the race or the hair that uh, just like burns out. And so like, do you actually want to win or do you just want to feel good hustling until you don't? Um, so just going into lies and truths, uh, I'd love to see which one of these um, lies are like really prominent in, in your life. What ones ring in your head? Um, Lars, what, what applied to you? Like, how did it show up? Uh, all of these. Um, 
I, I have, and it's, it's a lot better now. Um, but just a sense of urgency that is exhausting, you know, to for sure. And there are team members on here that will say it like, <laughs> yes, Lars, like a sense of urgency, like everything is the highest priority. And, and you, you rationalize it as a business person, you know, where there are some things that, you know, are high priority, but, but not to the point where they're going to trump other things. And so just priorities to me are, you know, very clear. If they're true priorities, they show up that way in your calendar. Um, so that one for sure. Uh, the time thing I've, I've figured that out, you know, pretty well. Um, but productivity, we did an exercise as a family, uh, like creating our family values. Sure. And, uh, my, I was just so caught up on productivity. Like to me, like people that to the point where I, I almost think like, if you're not like highly productive and it even gets in between my wife and I, like, she's not the most productive and like coaching your wife is the worst idea ever. Um, but I, I'm almost like, well, you're just not being productive, you know? And it's like, but, but then she'll be sitting outside and I'll be envious of, I'm like looking at her, like, what is she doing out there? And I'll ask her later. She's just, I was just listening to the birds. And I'm like, you were listening to the birds? <laughs> but the part of me is like, that's ridiculous. That part of me is like, I would love to listen to the birds. You're like, I don't even know how to do that. Like, no, you I you sit out there like? for like three minutes and it's like, okay. So there is still a part that is, you know, it's embedded and I, I get better every day with, with my quiet time first thing in the morning. But, um, yeah, so I, I feel like this is all, all me. <laughs> um, and again, it's like not pointing fingers. I was just kind of like dumping out what I've done and what I've experienced, but I think it's common for a lot of us. So no shame in that. Oh, here's another part. Speaking of shame, um, the lies will be that if you're not productive, right? Uh, you're useless, you know, you're not worth as much. And so that just recognize not only is that fear, but that's a guilt and shame. How many times do we feel guilty when we're not being quote unquote productive or a hustler, right? And so there's a lot of guilt and shame programmed into this whole hustle mentality that I literally had a very hard time going on vacation and just like truly just relaxing and not plugging into work. Um, and I know I've heard that, you know, so many different places, but just realize that is a guilt and shame that's rooted in that. And fear is something else, but guilt and shame is a huge, huge, um, kind of the pot of that as well. So, uh, real funny in the comments, Jill Lindstrom said, all of my emails have ASAP in them, like capital, <laughs> <laughs> I need this. And it's, you know, what makes me laugh on that is that I'll, I'll do it, except I'll, I'll put it in lowercase. So they know oh. that I need it as soon as possible, but it's not like as soon as possible, but I still need everything ASAP. Uh, I thought that oh. was hilarious. Does it make you feel better when you do it in lowercase forms? Is it like- 100% because like, I'm not being as, as much of a, you know, an, an a-hole if I lowercase the ASAP. Oh, it makes you feel like a little fuzzy delivery person. You're like, oh, I'm so sweet. I did it in all lowercase. Congratulations. Hey, I love it. That's pretty fun. Okay. All right. So uh, here's the thing. Well, now connecting, you know, business and practicality to some spirituality. But the truth is, is that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. We talked about all the different labels that we put on, you know, pro productivity. Oh, you're a hard worker. You're a go-getter. All those things that come out as an angel of light, meaning it comes out like a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? Um, it, it has the label of something good and noble, especially providing for your family as a husband, right? Like what's more noble than that? That's pretty hard to, to pierce, right? But when you look at your motivator and the price that you're paying, the collateral damage, if any, right? Then you can determine, you can discern, right? You can recognize if there is some crap underneath that that's really not healthy and not God, or if it's like literally Satan disguised as an angel of light trying to say, hey, we need to be more productive, right? Because these are good things. And you're not a human, you're not a man or a father if you don't. Um, but let's tap into some truth here. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I love this. Power, love, and a sound mind. Okay, so just that phrase alone, you can use that as like a, a thermostat, right? 
um, as a litmus test and be like, okay, am I operating in power, love, and a sound mind? Sound mind also translates to self-control, meaning you can turn it off, right? <laughs> but let's translate it to business talk. You can turn it off. If you find yourself not being able to turn it off, my friend, that is not self-control, right? That is not sound mind. That is not power and love. That's called out of control. You can't turn it off and you are spinning, right? And you can't go to sleep and you're anxious and you're depressed or you're stressed out. You have to take like antidepressant or, a, or whatever medication that you probably shouldn't have to if you tap more into power, love, and the sound mind, right? Um, and by the way, I'm not trying to knock on anybody um, about medication, but I'd say like there's a lot of situations where we're over medicated, right? Just as a banding, as an easy out. So um, just want to be respectful on that note. Um, but uh, so the question is, how can we stop the fear and get into power, love, and a sound mind? So let's talk solutions. Let's talk strategy, right? So I'm just going to um, lay some problems out there like, okay, I want to do this, but here's the practical pitfalls that comes up, you know, well, I got like 80 billion tasks to do today. Which one do I choose? So that's priority management. Okay. And uh, when should I do them? Because my day is kind of crazy. The moment that I wake up to when I go to sleep, it's like, you know, crazy town. That's time management issue. And in the middle of all this, how do I not go crazy? How do I not get pissed off? How do I not get out of balance? How do I not go crazy doing all of this? That's peace management. Okay, so we're going to tap into all of these three things in the solution. So it is a multi-pronged strategy of priority, time, and peace management. So let's step into it, shall we? Um, so I call it time blocking with God. Super simple. And it, it knocks out all these three things. So step one, or what is it? So time blocking with God is just simple. It's just the integration of God in your time, task, and priority management. And the result of that is like the best high quality decisions you make and the increased amount of peace that you have around that through the whole day. So here, here's the pitch. Here's the, here's the benefit package, right? You get, <clears throat> you get better productivity out of you and you have more peace, more sanity, more control in your mind um, over all of it throughout the day. Like who doesn't want that, right? So it's both practical, logical, and spiritual. So step one, it starts from waking up. Science, first 15 minutes of waking up, your brain is in the theta brainwave state. So that's that kind of that, that kind of lucid kind of, you know, in the shower, I'm thinking, and you have all these, you know, um, uh -huh. oh my gosh, I thought of this in the shower thing, right? It's because your brain is more in like very mushy, moldable state and like the ideas are flowing. That's the same state that you're in when you wake up the first 15 minutes, which means whatever you put in your brain in those 15 minutes is the mode that you're gonna continue to operate. So if you wake up first 15 minutes, start looking at whether it's social media to do, then you like get yourself riled up in like this fight or flight panic state of like, I gotta get all this crap done and hustle the crap out of the day then you are literally imprinting your brain with that type of mindset and energy. And it's going to ride you the rest of the day. Like it's freaking going to whoop you. Um, so the strategy on that is starting your mornings in a healthy way. So the way you start your mornings matters. Okay. So what I'm going to say is uh, no cell phone for the first 30 or 60 minutes. Definitely not in the first 15, right? But don't even look at your phone. Like, I know it's it's almost like this. Your hand is on autopilot to reach and then flip over your phone. Because I find myself doing that even, like, every single day. Um, and so, um, but I'm acknowledging the fact that it's a natural, like, programmed and thing. And I'm telling you, you got to, like, stop it. Like, say no. And so, because those things overstimulate your brain. And what we're going to show you is how to get into like time blocking with God and you can't hear, sense, or feel properly when you're overstimulated because you've got all this noise and it's literally crowding your mental real estate. <clears throat> and so that includes no social media, no email, no texting, no TV, no news. Um, any, I know like a lot of people like coffee, but like highly caffeinated, like energy drinks, it'll make your head so noisy when you're trying to like get quiet and um, get into like divine timing. Um, I would say hold it off as much as you can, okay? So uh, the next thing is, all right, so this is the, the steps to the practice is that each week I have a master weekly like to-do list, right? 
And so one side is business work stuff. And the other one is more personal, spiritual, right? So I'm going to make um, a list that separates the two um, that I'm going to continue to use throughout the whole week because we're going to reference it in these later two steps. So like, let's say on Sunday um, or first thing Monday, what, wherever your space is, um, you brain dump everything. And if you um, have a list from before, you just carry it over, right? This is just so you have a clean sheet because there's going to be things that you scratched out um, and things that you want to add to just start fresh each week. So you have this master list um, that you have, okay? Um, so imagine all of that being filled out. And then you have two options. I'm gonna give you two different styles of doing this for those who like to keep it like super, like kind of sticky note simple. And those who are a little bit more organized and wanna get time blocked. So hopefully you can mix and match or whatever. But the simple one is that you have a sticky note. You literally, so I do both, okay? I do the sticky note, literally just you draw a line through it. And here's what happens. As I'm in like my morning God time, I'm asking God, God, what are the top three things you want me to do? Because here's the thing. You're not going to get done all 80 bajillion things you got. And so you got to prioritize and do it with God. So here's the thing. When you are in quiet God time and you're asking God to lead you, that's your faith in action. Because the other alternative is that you use your puny little human brain to decide and you're doubting yourself and trying to change it up all day long. This is like the act of faith. You're choosing it with God and then by faith, you're executing on it. Okay. So what you do is you're looking at your master list. So this is your top three like business. Let's consider it like big rocks, right? <clears throat> that you want to do. And so maybe one big rock is, you know, doing... 30 minutes of lead gen, you know, right? Or maybe it's 30 minutes of, you know, training your new admin or 30 minutes of operations. Like you just need to organize some stuff. Maybe it's your taxes. Maybe it's your mail, whatever it is. You know, like there's these rocks that haven't been moved that you need to actually get some progress on. It's going to be on your list, right? Like just pick it out. Like you're literally asking God, God, what are the top three things you want me to do today in my business? You're looking over the list, you're listening, and you're just trying to be very quiet and almost like intuitive, right? Um, there's language about, you know, just being led by the spirit uh, or just listening to God. Like, what do you feel like he's putting on your heart? And you just faithfully, just like take a leap of faith and select the ones that are popping out to you and put it on the sheet, right? And you can just take your time doing it, but that's by faith choosing your top three priorities with God. And then you go into the follow-up category. There, there's going to be follow-up items that like, oh, you know, touch base with this repair, that repair, or this closing or whatever. There's going to be things that are more follow-up oriented. So pick those three follow-ups or like it can be a group, you know, follow-up with, you know, all the closings today or whatever. Um, but again, you'll find your own style and language around that, but try and not overload it. Do not, God's not going to overload you. If anything, the three that you pick, here's the thought that commonly come to mind. That's not enough. That's all. Like, I need to get more done. If you're feeling that, then you're probably on the right track. If you're feeling like, oh, yeah, okay, that's a nice, tight schedule. Nope, that probably is a good clue that you're packing it too much. <laughs> so back the truck up. <laughs> um, and uh, then you have your personal list, right? And you're like, okay, God, what do you want me to do in my, you know, in my personal list? Again, you're just leaning in what you feel like God's going to pop it out to you. And it doesn't mean you have to finish that whole thing. It might just mean like, hey, just do like, spend 25 minutes in it. They're just like spare a time block for it. And then in the spiritual aspect, it could be like, hey, pray for, you know, Johnny and Susie and whatever. Or maybe it's just, hey, just spend time with me, like spend 15 minutes with me. Um, so you just, you know, you're just listening and being obedient to these things. So um, it's like you're doing the same things as far as prioritizing. But the extra bonus items, you're integrating God, with it. and it is that simple. Like, just bother to ask God, and He will show up for you. So, um, the phrase all that is trust, listen, and obey. So, the next option is okay, so like, okay, so then once you have that, then you look at that. That's your to do list for the day. And these don't all have to be full. If God just gives you one in, you know, like some of these categories, that's fine. He's never going to overbook you. Um, and you just go about your day. Okay. For those of you who like to be a little bit more organized and actually like have time blocks in there, here's what I would do. 
um, there's a sheet and I'll share this with you. Um, you know, this is just like a regular calendar planning, you know, day type of sheet. First, write down any set appointments that you actually have, right? Because those aren't moving. Um, and so you write those in, uh, including your lunch. Okay, people, let's eat lunch. Let's keep your body healthy. And, um, and ask God, what three things, oh, after, uh, what, after you fill this in. So instead of the sticky note, the second step is that you're going to ask that same question and write it down in here. Okay. Um, and so now it's on your platter sheet. And then the last step that's different is, okay, now you're looking at this and say, okay, God, help me time block here. Where and when should I do these things? So it's almost like you're draw dragging and dropping, but you know, with your pencil. So if it said, you know, um, you know, do a lead gen, then you're like, okay, God, when should I do it? And it might be like, you might just kind of feel like a little poke, you know, you're like, oh, I feel like 10 o'clock is kind of standing out for me. Okay. Right in 10 o'clock, you know? Okay. The second thing, you know, this other time block of, you know, training your admin. Okay. Well then um, do that at 1130, you know? So you're just literally, it's like you're doing the same thing, but you're integrating God into it. It's, it's not like this whole new system. It's the same thing, but you're asking God, you're just bothering to ask God. And so that's literally all of it. It's like, it's not rocket science. It's just simple, but just involve God in it. Just ask him, just like, listen, sit still for a little bit and wait for his answer and see what you see, sense, or feel. And so that's pretty much um, what that looks like. And I just want to, this is my testimony on The results from that is just like amazing because I have like 10 is probably an understatement. Just so much more incredible peace because I'm like, okay, I did this with God. I time blocked with God and by faith, I'm going to be obedient. By faith, I'm going to execute this in excellence because that's what he does. And guess what? He's bigger than your mistakes because you're like, oh, what if I did? Oh, maybe this was supposed to be da -da -da. You know, how many times have you been like, um, you know, back to right on that? Oh, I got to move this, move that, da -da -da. Oh, I really should have put this on my to-do list. And I got to take this out. Like all this reorganizing, all this like craziness. But when you do it with God, here's what steps in. I'm like, whoa, wait, hold on. Am I going to believe that I time block with God or not? Or am I going to choose to panic and go back into fear and try and rearrange the crap out of it, right? And so it literally helps me pop the brakes and be like, no, I did this with God. I'm going to honor it. He's going to honor me. And if I need to make any adjustments, I'll do it intentionally with him, but not in my crazy mode. Not in my mode where my brain is spinning and I'm doing it out of like panic, anxiety, or fear. So when you do that, oh my gosh, you forget less things because you just like, you just did it with God. You stress and worry less because you're doing certain things that God's prompting you. Like there's just more organization and order. And may I say that you have more lucky breaks. Like how many times has God like canceled appointments? I'm like, oh, this is feeling a little tight. I'm like, God, was I supposed to do that? Next thing I know, boop, canceled appointment. Like he actually, because you're now inviting him into your time blocking and schedule, I promise you, he starts rearranging your schedule, right? Like it's the coolest thing ever, but you're not going to get it if you don't ever integrate God into it. Like that simple invitation of doing that starts like procuring some like cool, supernatural little, little fingerprints that are amazing. Um, and you just have increased space that things are just going to work out and they do so much more. You have so much more peace. Um, so this will just help you progress more in all areas of life, personally, well, spiritual business. And, um, that is pretty much what you can expect. So I have, uh, I have all that, these like three sheets. It's not like this whole packet. It's just three sheets. Uh, your the to do list, the the sticky note version, and then like the day planning version, and so um, it's a free download. This is not even there's not even a registration. It's literally the link go download. Like I'm not even trying to like <laughs> like get emails or anything. Like it's just there for you to download. So seizethemarket.com slash time. It's all yours. Have fun, and we can open it up to any comments, thoughts, or questions. So Lars, take it away. Yeah, any questions uh, while we have Christine for a few more minutes? This is uh, awesome. And I would say the, the results for me in a really short period of time uh, was just like extreme clarity on my priorities, you know, so, um, and really getting my work into the smallest time blocks as possible. So where it would just sort of flow into everything, I would be in it, out of bed and, and email, kind of doing the things. Um, 
you know, I just cut it off and I just know that my kids need me right now. And I'm just in, in that. And I know, you know, instead of watching Netflix before bed, I know that my wife needs me in, in that time. And but that's been the, and just a lot more peace. It's been awesome. Any comments or questions from you guys? Lots of really solid, like, this is just what I needed. And thanks. Um, just confirmation, moving my family on brokers. EXP was the right thing to do for sure. Um, yeah, really, really good. I, I would encourage you guys to, to what I, what I was doing, which was wrong. And Christine called me out on it. Um, do exactly that. Just go from waking up. So I wake up at 5 a.m. and I start my my work time at 5.30. But that 5 to 5.30 is doing doing just this. Not exactly this. You were holding this back for me. This is a little bit new. <laughs> but this, this is pretty cool, this process. But um, awesome, awesome. All right, cool. Well, thanks, Christine. I appreciate you.